we're going to review. We're going to go for homework and take a homework quiz, and we're going to review for our uh, quiz that we're going to have on Monday. Um, so I thought we would start with this one. We, uh, I didn't know if there were that many Ellen ones on your homework yesterday, so uh, I made sure to pick a few today to do this. Um, just like log, Ellen is just a special log. If we see Ellen that's addition, what do we know we can put it back together as? Multiplication. So we can write that as Ellen of x times x plus 2. Here's where I was messing up on number 18, the one that was log. I put it together. And then I just said this equals this, and I forgot to do the base. I know, and I was like, why isn't this working? And then I realized I forgot that I was supposed to change it. But I caught it. I fixed it. So same thing on here. We can't make this Ellen go away unless we undo it. And how do we undo Ellen? E it. So you can E this, and you can E this. Well, you could do base. Uh, you could rewrite it. Either way you rewrite it, you could end up with E to the fourth equals this, right? Because Ellen is base two. What do you want to do on this? Yeah. No, it's okay. I just want to know what you're thinking. No, log is base 10. If it's just log with nothing, it's base 10. Ln of something is really log base e. That's why you can e both sides. Because if you e ln, it cancels out. So you're left with x. Solve this equation. I can't believe I swear I took this out of the book. We could do quadratic formula, you're right. That's terrible. E to the fourth is a number, it's just, I was hoping it would just not be as ugly as this, but. That's terrible. What are your wins and prize today for saying quadratic formula? Negative b would be negative two plus or minus the square root of b squared would be four minus four times one times negative e to the fourth all over 2 times 1. The good news about this is if you leave your answer in exact, that's what your directions say, it's probably good, give uh, an exact form as well as decimal form. In exact form, there's not really a whole lot you can do on this. Exact form here would be negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 4, negative 4 times negative e would be plus, 4e to the 4th, all divided by 2. It looks like you want to separate this. 4 is a perfect square, but you can't break up addition and subtraction. Yeah, did I do something wrong? What, what, what did you say, Nathan? I would say this would be the exact answer, uh, except for you don't want to give a negative. So I think that probably you would throw out the uh, the negative one of these. Like it's just going to be plus, because otherwise you're going to get a negative answer. And then you can just do that on your calculator and get a decimal. I think the directions say some sort of decimal place. But I can do that all at once on my calculator. Negative 2 plus the square root of 4 plus 4 times e to the 4th, close that parenthesis or hit enter, and then divide by 2. That's about 6.456, I believe. That's terrible. I thought I was taking such an easy problem. The big thing that I would say is make sure that you close your parentheses on your calculator. So if I was typing this on my calculator, 
when I put a square root, it starts a parenthesis. Um, you, it starts a parenthesis for e to the fourth also, or maybe I did something wrong. You need to close two of those parentheses at the end. Or just hit enter. Do the top and hit enter, and then divide. Like, that's what you do when you have to worry about parentheses. So do the top part, hit enter, divide by two, and I think you should get 6.4 answers. It's not impossible to do. It's just ugly, right? It's not going to be on your unit test either. <laughs> oh right, uh, apparently I can't teach uh, this, but it's not a bad thing. Well, I'm going to read it. Oh, yeah. Challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to print out um, like the notes, of some of the notes so I can give them to my actually doing a lesson tomorrow. And uh, he, he just wants to know that I'm actually teaching what we're supposed to teach. We've done everything plus extra. We've done more in this class than they have to do by the text if we have more time. So sometimes I make you do harder stuff than what you really have to do. Because and then when Dan tells them to be like, oh, well, this is available every fourth week. Well, it's a joke. All right. That was the worst one. It's gonna, it, these aren't so bad, but these are different than yesterday. When we first started solving these equations back before spring break, if you had something like this, you could rewrite it with the same base, and then you could just, if the bases were the same, you could make the exponents the same. Can you write 10 as 2 to a power? No. Which means we have to know how to get this x out of the exponent. And the only way we can do that is if we introduce a log or an ln into this problem. I like ln, so I always ln both sides on this, but you can log base 10 both sides also. Why do we choose those? Because that's what you use a calculator with. So just like you can e both sides, you can 4 both sides, um, you can ln both sides. So on this one, watch what happens here. If I ln both sides, why is that a good thing to do? What can I do now with that x if I have ln of 2 to x? That property says if you have a log or an ln with an exponent, you can pull that x out front. So if you see an x in the exponent that you don't know how to get out of it, just ln both sides. And then you can pull that out front, right? And we're just trying to solve for x, so what are you going to do? Divide by ln of 2. Do not tell me that the ln of 10 divided by the ln of 2 is the ln of 5. That is not true. It says give both the exact answer and the decimal answer. So the exact answer would be the ln of 10 divided by the ln of 2, and then the decimal answer would be where you use your calculator. Again, if you're typing this on your calculator and you're not hitting equals at the ln of 10, you have to make sure you close the parentheses on 10 so that it knows then you're dividing by a different ln, not all the same ln. 10 divided by ln of 2, not divided by 2. Ln of 2 um, is about 3.3. Yeah. Anybody need a calculator? Why do I have this covered up like you can't see it? <laughs> it just helps me to focus on one. So once you know that trick, most of the problems today are going to be like that. I can't make 3 and 4 the same base, but I need to get those exponents those x's out of the exponent. So I'm going to ln both sides because I like ln, but you can log both sides if you want. But I'm going to take the ln of 3 to the 1 minus 2x equals ln of 4 to the x. Yeah, you just have log base 10 into the ln. If you think about our change of base formula, remember you can always rewrite it using ln or log base 10 and you can answer it. That's not What about this one? This one turns out to be a little bit uglier, I think, right? Maybe not. bring that out front, and I have 1 minus 2x times ln of 3 equals x times ln of 4. What am I doing that? That's ridiculous. We need to get 
get our exes together, right? We can't really get our exes together right now because you could say, well, you could you could divide this over here and divide x over here, but then you're going to have x in the bottom, and that's not going to really be so good. So uh, I think what we have to do is we need to distribute this ln to that. So I would get ln of 3 minus, I'm just going to write 2 ln of 3, oh wait, I need to write up there, oh wait, you know, 2x ln of 3, everybody okay with that if I distribute that? And then over here I get x times ln of 4. Yes? If I wanted to get my x's together, could I add this whole thing to this side? I'm distributing the ln of 3. ln of 3 is one thing. So I'm taking ln of 3 times 1 and ln of 3 times 2x. Because you can't separate the ln from the 3. And then again, I can't, I mean, I could divide this, but that's not going to help me right now. I think I should add 2x ln of 3. the other side and again in my head I'm thinking I want to get my x's together so on this side I have ln of 3 you think you can add x ln of 4 plus 2x ln of 3 and get 3x ln of 7 no, we can't do that. anybody got an idea of what we should do there I'm trying to get the x by itself, so can we factor an x out of that? Like pull the x out front, and then we'd have ln of 4 plus 2 ln of 3. Huh? We're almost done now. What would, I, what would be my last step? Divide that over. And this is going to be really a whole lot to write on your calculator at once. But that would be your exact answer. ln of 3 divided by ln of 4 plus 2 ln of 3. Um, could you simplify it and make it less to type in using your properties? You could. I don't think see a reason to. But could you technically put that 2 in there and make that ln of 9? Could you put those back together as multiplication? I'm okay if you do that. I'm not going to make you do it because I don't want to make you have to do extra work. But you definitely could make it less to type in your calculator. If you're typing this in your calculator, here's what I would do. Ln of 3, close your parentheses, hit divided by, start a new parentheses so that it knows it's dividing by all of that. Because if you don't put a new parentheses there, then it thinks it's only dividing by Ln of 4 and then it's going to change it. Put all these parentheses in for now. I don't think you really have to close them. See if that works with those parentheses. And then I'll show you how we can do the properties and make it less type in your calculator. No. Oh, log way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, log is another one. Um, just so you know, just using our properties on the bottom here, you could make this ln of 4 plus ln of 9, because that would be 3 squared. Yes? And then you could make that ln of 4 times 9 is 36. And if you take ln of 3 divided by ln of 36, you get the same thing. You don't have to do that. I'm just showing you that you could if you want to be super fancy. No? You yeah, don't want to be fancy? I do know what I Have a nice nap. <laughs> You're all by your lonesome today. What about this one? Should you... I think ln is a better choice than log on this one, just because ln of e cancels out, which makes, I think, this not as hard as the last problem. do a little bit of work on this one. Um, so on this 
this one I can pull out my 1 minus x, ln of 4. And ln of e to the x is just x. If you left that in there, you didn't. You left it as x ln of e, you still get the same answer because ln of e is just 1. But just like the last one, I think we need to distribute the ln of 4. You distribute that in, you can move your x's over, factor the x out. Um, but if you divide by 1 minus x, how are you going to get rid of that 1 minus? You see what I'm saying? Like you have ln of 4 equals x over 1 minus x, now what are you going to do? You see what I'm saying? Like I think the best choice is distribute. Move that over, factor your x out. So you get x plus x ln of 4, so we can factor the x out and get 1 plus ln of 4. So I think the answer would be divide that over ln of 4 divided by 1 plus ln of 4. Again, start that parenthesis on the bottom if you're going to type it in your calculator. I got a very small number in there. 0.581 I got on that one. So the other thing is now that we can solve when there's x's in the exponent, we can do some sort of problem. Uh, I added, are you with me with this part where I distributed the ln of 4 in here? Like I distributed ln of 4 times 1 is ln of 4, ln of 4 times negative x is negative x ln of 4. So then I just added that over to the other side. Sorry, I can't add x plus x together because this is kind of stuck together, but I just added that over to the other side. You with me on that? There are some story problems on your uh, unit test. Uh, and again, I just want to practice these because they're not that bad to do. Read the problem, figure out what the letters stand for, figure out what they give you and what you're looking for. Sometimes you're going to have to do some log LN stuff maybe. Uh, other times you're just going to plug a number. So I gave you a couple ones. That's why I printed these off for you. Because I know you wouldn't write this down, right? It says the resident population of the U.S. in 2008 was 304 million people and was growing at a rate of 0.9% per year. Assuming that this growth rate continues, the model, notice they don't make you write the equation, they give you this equation, represents the population P in millions of people uh, in year T. So notice, P is the population, P is the year. So think about if you plugged in 2008, you would get this to the zero power, which is 1. 1 times 304 is 304 million, which was the population in 2008. It says, according to this model, when will the population of the U.S. be 354 million? Where do you plug in 354? Do you plug it in for P or do you plug it in for T? P, that's the population. And if they're asking me for when, what are they asking me to solve for? T. So plug in, and you don't have to plug in million because it's in millions per piece. People, you're just going to plug in 354 equals 304 times 1.009 to the P minus 2008 power. The good news about this is there's only one letter in there, so you're not going to have to do the crazy like distributing stuff. But you've got to be able to solve this for T. Step one, we want to get this by itself. So can I divide 304 over there? the other side. And it's up to you. If you want to divide that now and get a decimal, you can. Uh, if you want to just leave it as 354 divided by 304, that's okay too. I tend to like to wait till the end to 
round because right now if you divide that you get like 1.164 which is okay but my advice is if you're going to use a decimal right now use at least five to six decimals because if you round too early and you keep rounding every time you divide or multiply you're going to get what they call round off error so just use a lot of decimals if you want to use decimals I'm just going to leave it like this because I like that and I'm going to simplify it And now, just like the problems that we did on the other part today, store problem, I need to get that t out of the exponent. So what am I going to do to both sides? ln or log. So I'm going to take the ln of 354 divided by 304, or that 1.16447. And the ln of 1.009 t minus 2008. And again, why do we all in both sides? So that we can pull that exponent out front. So we can't solve it if the letter's up there in the exponent. So I'm going to pull that out front. T minus 2008 times ln of 1.009. I'm trying to solve it for T. So what could I do to get T by itself? Or what should I have to do first? I could distribute. That would work. Um, since there's only one T, I'm not going to distribute because I that's going to be ugly for me, I think. Should I divide by this first since it's multiplied? Yes. And it's okay if you distribute. You'll still get the same answer. But I think if we divide ln of 1.009 over, and again, you want to type that in your calculator now and get the answer that you can. That's going to equal t minus 2008. So what's the last thing you're going to have to do? Add 2008. So I think what I'm going to type on my calculator is uh, 2008. I'm going to add that to ln of 354 over 304 divided by ln of 1.009. There is no expectation that you have to wait till the end to do this. I just like to because I, I like to type it all in at once. You can do it as you go, and as long as you include at least five decimals, you should get the same answer. So let's see what we get here. Two thousand twenty four point nine nine, which means it's at the very, very end of two thousand twenty four, right? And if we were gonna round that, we would say at about two thousand twenty five, I think I would round to that. No. We could be super nerdy and change point nine nine years to months or even days and and get the exact date in two thousand twenty four. Uh, it's perfect. There's no seconds. Exactly 24 minutes. <laughs> we gotta go find that baby. But I think I'm okay with just rounding that, or saying, or saying that I would take either answer. Okay. Um. I don't know that we really need to do another one of these. It's the same idea. We would just plug in 416. You with me on that? Just a lot of work. I'm gonna skip that so you have some time to work on homework. But I wanted to do another one to, sh to show you the difference here. It says 
the value V of a Honda Civic VX, I don't even know what that is, but I copied it out of the book, that is T year gold can be modeled by this equation. And just to show you, um, this I'm guessing is the original value of the car. This is the rate that it's uh, losing its value over time. Um, I just wanted to show you the two different problems I can give you. It says, according to this model, what will the value of the Honda be after three years? So notice on this one, they give me three years. Where am I going to plug that in? T is time, which means you don't have to do all that hard work that we just did for this problem. So make sure you read it and you plug into the right spot, because all you have to do on this is type it in your calculator to the third power, and that's going to tell you in three years, according to this model, how much that Honda is worth. Did you get like 14 points? That can't be right. <laughs> Hold on, I think, uh, hmm. No, it is! I, this is not the problem in your homework, but it's supposed to be this easy. Let's say, let's say 14, let's just put a comma in there. Let's just make that 14,000. I don't think you can do that. Here, you're going to do it. Three hundred and eighty-two. It does. I made it up. Oh, I mean, I got the equation from the book, but it asked you part B, and I was trying to give you part A. Uh, what about the bottom one? Is that as easy? Oh, ha, 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 ha. The book says point nine oh five. I just only changed my number. So you're right. I know. I was just trying to make it work. Here we go. Twelve thousand. See, look, we can do this. Our answer will be close to five. I was just making it work because I know it should work. I just typed it wrong. 0.905, not 0.95. 905. There we go. It'd be nice if the equation was right. What about this? According to the model, when will the car be worth 4,000? Where are you going to plug in 4,000? And then you got to kind of do it just like the last one. So see if you can solve this using 0.905. Get in how many years will it be down to four thousand dollars? I thought Hondas were cars that were worth like a lot of money because you can drive them forever. Honda Civic. Uh, Isn't that Hondas? I just mean like mileage wise. Like I thought you could drive Hondas for like three hundred thousand miles. Are you guys decimal people? Like, do you get decimals as you go through this, or you keep it all in fraction like I did? I just like it better than trying to keep track of all the decimals.
And then really, you're going to ln both sides, and this one's much easier than the first one because you're just going to divide that over, right? The good thing about story problems is that um, you can see if your answer makes sense or not. I don't think it should be like 72 years because I don't think you're going to have 100 for 72 years. Because Hondas are, I don't know, I thought Hondas were pretty good in terms of mileage. Right, like it's hard to buy used Honda, like used Hondas are very expensive because they, yeah, if it has like 90,000 miles, they still are asking lots and lots of money for them because they're really, really expensive. All right, let's see if, I, if we're going to do it. Let's change this to 45 instead of 48, so you only have to do two of those with the distributed thing. And then 98 and 100 are a story problem. Um, let's do 98 part A only, so you don't have to do all these a million times. And uh, 100 is another, uh, why did I, I'm pretty sure we could do 100. I don't need it part C. So let's do 100 part A also. Okay, so you only have to do part A on both of those. If you want to do more to practice them, you can. Uh, but those are the story problems I want to make sure that we do. Tomorrow, remember that the guy from Ivy Tech will be in here. So just behave yourself. Maybe try not to sleep. Middle school students. Um, so if you have middle school age students.